One of the most common asked questions for people buying wood burning stoves in South Africa is what size stove do I need for my room space? Now it's not an easy uh, question to answer. Most um, distributors in South Africa will use a calculation based on the size of your room and they'll, then they'll divide it by a factor. Sometimes it's 25, sometimes another number depending on the local distributor and then they'll arrive at a kilowatt requirement based on that calculation. That's great, but it does beg the question as to whether this figure, 25 in this instance, is gonna give us an accurate calculation for the size of stove we need. So let's use an example. The room that we're gonna use in this video, here are the dimensions for it. If we come to a total cubic volume of 150 cubic meters, divide that by 25, gives us a requirement of six kilowatts for this room. To help us find out if that is enough, we're going to look at something called heat need. When we run our wood burners, they radiate heat. However, the room that our wood burner is in also loses heat over a period of time. As that heat is lost, cool air is also drawn into the room. And so that room requires a certain amount of heat to keep it at a suitable ambient temperature. And that is what we would term our heat need. So how much heat does our room need to keep it nice and warm? Well, there's a great website run by these folks, Solif Tech. The Solif Tech website contains loads of free information to help you get the very best out of your own wood or multi-fuel burning stove. For example, on their website, if you search in the search menu for heat need, we'll do that now, you'll be taken to a link which helps you to calculate how much heat your room needs to stay warm. Here we go. How does the calculator work? Well, to start, we need to assess what our external temperature is. So here we've got a figure of minus five. Well, in Cape Town, on a chilly evening, even zero would be pretty pessimistic. So I'm gonna set it at five degrees as my external temperature. I then have to set what I want it to be inside the room. I'm gonna put it at 22 degrees. When it comes to air changes, these guys recommend that a minimum air change of 0.35 changes per hour is good to aim for. So if I leave that at one, then I'm being quite generous in terms of my air changes. The next part of the calculator is pretty straightforward. Here, we're required to fill in details of the wall construction and size. So I'm putting in the measurements, standard height as you can see. My wall is constructed a little bit like this, so it's an external cavity wall with no extra insulation. And then I just need to put my temperature in as specified earlier. I then need to calculate the uh, openings in the room. In this case, I've got a large French door um, and I'm putting the measurements in for that. And then obviously what that opening is made of. I've um, just got to adjust the measurements there. So we've got a metal frame, single glazed window or French doors. Now at the other end of the room, we've got two openings that lead into other portions of the house. So first of all, I'm going to combine the total area of those two openings separately into one set of figures. So work it out for each one, add them together, and then put a set of figures in that will equal that opening. And the second key detail here to remember is that there's no window, but my temperature is only gonna be a couple of degrees lower than the actual room. So let's put that at 19. I then continue to complete the information for the other two walls. Um, this long wall on the side of the room by the fireplace has two windows in it. So we have to do the same um, method of combining the two openings in total and putting in one set of figures. Again, temperature and everything else as before. The opposite wall is, exact, is a pretty much a mirror of the other wall. So we've got an identical. Then we talk about what's in our roof space. So my roof insulation, as it was, looked something like this. 
um, very poor and possibly at most a 50 millimeter insulation. So that's what I'm gonna put in. External temperature, again, should be the same. So I'm gonna leave that at five. Then, like many homes, my floor is a solid concrete floor with tiles. But what do I do for the temperature on the other side of that? Well, according to this link, um, it's, these guys say that um, your average ambient air temperature is equivalent to your average ambient ground temperature. So I did another bit of research and found out that Cape Town's average ambient air temperature in winter is around about the 12 degree mark. So I put uh, 12 and a half, I think it was, there we go. Uh, so it's rounded it up to 13. So that gives me my temperature for my ground. So then I've filled everything in and at the bottom, I'm given a figure. And that figure is 4.6 kilowatts. In comparison to our original calculation of 5.9 kilowatts, that's actually quite encouraging. It's a good result, yes indeed. However, we can improve even further by reducing the amount of heat we're losing from our room by making a couple of adjustments. First of all, we can make sure that at night we close our windows and close our window dressings. By doing so, we'll greatly improve the amount of heat that we lose from the room. Solifetech guys confirm that that would be equivalent to possibly 10 mil or 20 mil double glazing even. So I'm gonna be conservative and mark that to 10 millimeter double glazing. Then we've got our roof insulation issue. By just improving the 50 mil insulation that I have got to 100 millimeters, which is what I've done, I can again drastically reduce the heat loss from the room. My figure now has been reduced to 3.8 kilowatts of heat loss. That's a 20% improvement on what the room was losing before. So that means 20% less fuel that I'm burning to keep the room at the same ambient temperature. And 20% less pollutant going up into the atmosphere, which of course is something we all want. In recent years, I've been able to test three Charmwood stoves in my room. On each occasion, I've opted for a seven kilowatt nominal output stove and they've all performed wonderfully. This means that I have ample potential to heat and maintain the temperature in the room. And I've also found that the extended areas of the house also heat up. Check out this video we made a couple of years ago where we tested that. The lessons from this exercise for me were that one, before you spec your stove, take some time to think about where you may be losing heat from that space and address it. And then two, by making a couple of simple adjustments, you could substantially reduce the amount of fuel you burn and also the size of stove you need in the room, which are all big money savers. Now, I thought the video was over here. However, the guys at Solivtech came back to me, thanked me for the video, said they really liked it, but they just had one suggestion, and that was that the air changes per hour that I've suggested might be a bit optimistic. Although the minimum, according to the EPA, is a third of a change per hour, in reality, a normal residential living area will probably experience about two and a half changes per hour. Now, if I input that information into the um, calculator, as you can see, it quite dramatically adjusts the calculation from 3.8 kilowatts to 5.1 kilowatts of loss per hour, which again, stacks up with the kind of size of stove that I'm using and that I need. So bear that in mind when you're doing your own calculations. We hope that you found the video useful. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content.